What's for dinner? Hey everyone, I'm Chef Z and welcome back to Chef Z Cooks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make asopa de pollo, which is a Dominican chicken and rice soup. And let me tell you guys something, the weather is absolutely perfect for such a hearty and comfort food dish like this. Now last year, I showed you how to make the same exact dish just with shrimp. So I showed you how to make asopa de camarones. Now there's going to be some similarities, but obvious one of the big differences is the chicken. Now you guys shouldn't be surprised at this point. I will be sharing my grandmother's recipe, which calls for some smoked pork chops. And let me tell you that smoky undertone with the chicken is so, so good. But if you don't eat pork or you can't find the smoked pork chops in your grocery store, don't worry because you can actually leave it out and you're still going to end up with an amazing asopa de pollo. Let's go ahead and get started. Making asopa de pollo is actually not all that complicated and one of the great things about this dish is that you can really make it to taste so you can substitute a lot of these ingredients for some of your favorite ingredients. We're going to start off by seasoning the chicken with some mashed garlic. And we're also going to add some Dominican oregano. And of course, we're just going to add a little bit of sopita, which is a chicken bouillon cube. But you can definitely use adobo if that's what you have on hand. And we're also going to add some black pepper. Now we're going to squeeze some sour oranges, just making sure not to let any of the pits get in. Now, if you don't have any sour oranges, you can make it yourself by using one part orange and one part lime, or you can just use lime instead. We're now going to mix everything until it's well combined. Now, if you're in a rush and you don't have time to let the chicken kind of marinate, that's totally okay, but you typically do want to let it marinate for about 20 minutes to an hour or two. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start warming up some water and we're just going to place that off to the side. Whenever I'm making asopao, whether it's asopao de camarone or asopao de pollo, I always like to have water warm in the back because it doesn't slow down the cooking process. We're now going to add some oil into our Dutch oven and once it heats up, we're going to go ahead and add the chicken. Do keep in mind that I am using a variety of different chicken cuts. So I have some chicken breasts, I have some mulos, which are some drumsticks, and I have some chicken thighs. But do keep in mind that I have removed all of the skin from the chicken just because this is going to prevent my asopal from becoming very greasy. So once you've started to brown the chicken, we're going to add our smoked pork chops, which I went ahead and I cubed just because it makes it a lot more easier to cook throughout the asopal. So you want to let the smoked pork chops and the chicken really saute because you want to develop color, but you also want to develop flavor. So it's going to brown a little bit at the bottom of the pot, which is called foam. I add a tiny bit of water and now I'm going to add my onions and my peppers. I am using ajicitos as well as green peppers. If you can't find ajicitos in your local grocery store, don't worry because regular green pepper will also do. I also added some celery and some tomato paste. Now do keep Keep in mind that the tomato paste is going to be a little bit stubborn in mixing it in with the chicken and the veggies but don't worry because that tiny bit of water that we added is actually really going to help you so let it simmer let it saute for another two or three minutes and as you can see the tomato paste does break down and it beautifully coats the chicken and the veggies you always want to make sure to give it a nice stir just so it doesn't stick and burn at the bottom of the pot now you want to take that water that we've been heating up for quite some time now and you want to add it to the chicken and the veggies. You want to add enough water to fully submerge the chicken. Now go ahead and add some more water into that pot because you always want to have hot water ready to go. We're now going to add some aoyama, some peas, some carrots, and of course some corn. We're also gonna add some recao, and I'm using both kinds, cilantro and culantro. And we're also going to add some sopita, which is a chicken bouillon cube. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're also going to add some rice. Now, I'm only adding one cup of rice, and trust me, this is going to be more than enough. 
and you want to add the rice just when your asopao has begun to boil and you always want to stir it because the rice will have a tendency to stick to the bottom. Now I'm showing you the rice here. It deceivingly looks like it's cooked but it's really not. So you want to go ahead and add some more warm water just to help the rice continue cooking. And listen, there are a few different ways of building color to your asopao. I like to build the color using the aoyama but this is where you can also add those sazon packets as well. We're now gonna go ahead and we're going to clean up the asopao. My sister is a picky eater, so I typically cut my veggies a little bit big, but you can cut them small and you won't have to actually clean up your asopao if you're not serving this to picky eaters. You know your asopao is cooked when your rice is nice and kind of blown up just like you see here and beautiful and just really nice and soft. At the very end, I like to squeeze just a tiny bit of sour orange because it really makes all those flavors come together. And if you ever feel like your asopao is getting too thick, just go ahead and add a little bit more water. Again, this is a dish that can definitely feed a village. Now, like I mentioned before, there's a million one ways to making asopao. Comment down below and let me know how you like it. I love having asopao with some tostones. And at the very end, I also like to add just some more fresh lime as I'm eating it and a tiny bit of hot sauce. So there you guys have it, my recipe for asopao de pollo. Can't wait to see you guys next week with an all new video. Buen provecho, guys. All right, guys, so now that I've taught you how to make an asopa de pollo, I have some quick-ish tips. I have a bunch of tips, so I'm going to try and keep it really brief and just kind of go through them one by one just so that you make this dish perfect each and every single time. So first things first, make sure that you're making this dish in a big pot. It can be either a caidero or a Dutch oven. This dish does have the tendency to multiply, well, any dish, whether you're making asopa de camarone or asopa de pollo. So you wanna make sure that you're using a large enough pot. Now, this dish is known for feeding a village. So if you have a lot of people kind of coming over and you're like, ooh, I don't know if I made enough, just go ahead and add a little bit more water or you can add more rice. Just be careful because the rice is actually the culprit and that's what makes this dish kind of just multiply again and again and again. Now, let's say that you have picky kids in your family or a picky husband or you're picky, whatever the case may be, you can definitely make this dish only using some chicken breast and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Quick tip for the picky eaters, if they're not crazy about the vegetables but you still want the flavor in the dish, just cut the vegetable pieces fairly big so that right when the dish is ready, you just it makes it easy for you to go in and clean it up. Now. You can make this dish ahead of time. And like many stews here on my channel, if you make it on a Sunday and then you reheat it throughout the week, when it gets cold, it's gonna get super thick. So when you're warming it up, you're gonna wanna add a little extra water and you're gonna wanna pay attention because the rice will have the tendency to stick at the bottom of the pot. And the last thing you want is that flavor of burnt rice at the bottom of the pot. Like listen, kokon is amazing, just not in some asopao. And of course, last but not least, asopao has that amazing orangey kind of reddish color and you can get that color a variety of different ways. You can use aoyama just like I did or you can use the sazon packets or honestly, you can use a combination of the two. It's totally up to you. Whatever you decide, your asopao de pollo is going to be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to join the Chef Z family and subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so that you're notified each and every single time I post an all new video. And if you're looking for some more yummy recipes, feel free to click right here.